So welcome back. We're going to use simulation to solve the inventory problem. Now, if you remember from before, what we discussed is that the random element, the simulation is in blue. So what's random? Well, one of the things that's random in the inventory problem is demand. So how much do people want on any given day? And again, that's that's random. And of course, for lead time, and that is when we order from our supplier, how many days is it going to take? Okay, and that's the sort of lead time, and that's random as well. Now, notice in terms of the demand, all right, it's calling up this demand distribution here, and again, that's what we would call a discrete general probability distribution, all right? And if we look at the lead time over here and click on one, and let's just click on here, you'll see that it's using the RAM between, okay, and it's, re and it's referring to these numbers here and that is a uniform probability distribution and because it's between one and three that means one two and three all have an equal probability of occurring just like a six-sided dice right uh, between one and six you know and you've got yourself a dice right in, in that sense because it's it should be unless unless you got some kind of weird dice it should be equal probability of falling on any number Okay, and again, just to recap, we have looked at um, incorporating into simulation the normal distribution, all right, and of course, the um, what we just talked about, the discrete general probability distribution, right, when we use the lookup table, look it up in our table right here. Okay, and the new one that we're talking about today is using the RAM between, and that's the uniform probability distribution, and again, you just need to input in the two numbers, and it's going to have equal probability between those two numbers. Okay, so I won't go in depth in terms of every uh, single cell. Again, you can do that. I'll leave a link uh, below in this video where you can go to the website and if you don't have that file already, you can go to chapter 10 and you can download the data files. Okay, so a few things to note uh, when we're looking at our inventory problem and that is right here, you know, how much should we order? When we order, uh, product into our warehouse, how much should we order at a time? Okay, and what is the trigger? What is the reorder point? So, uh, and you can see in this case, it's five. So whenever inventory gets to five or fewer, then there's gonna be an automatic order coming in. Okay, and then again, remember the lead time, max and min uh, lead time, and that has to do with the lead time being uh, what we would call a uniform probability distribution. And of course, it needs those two numbers. Okay, holding costs when we hold inventory for each drill, because again, in this example, they're holding drills, it's two cents per day. Okay, stockout cost is $8, and that's an approximate estimate of people leaving the store um, not getting a drill, because the drill is sort of sold out. So let's say that um, you had three drills in stock, and five people came in to buy that drill, well, then there's going to be a couple people leaving. And when they leave, that's a stockout cost. Okay, and every time we order, it's 20 as well. It's $20. All right, so these are all the various holding costs. So again, there's a bit of a trade-off, right? Like, for example, if you have lots of inventory, you'll be paying more for holding costs, but your stockout cost should be lower because you have lots of inventory. Then it's going to be very, very rare that somebody comes in and you don't have a drill uh, available for them. But of course, if you're ordering it in more all the time, then your order costs go up. So there's a bit of a trade-off going around for this one. Okay, so... Uh, and one thing to make note of, okay, is this column right here, column I. And column I has what we call memory. So without this memory, when your inventory gets low, you'll just keep ordering in uh, stock all the time, not knowing that there's some already coming in. So this takes into account that there's some already coming in. So if I click on a cell, let's say I click on this one here, just double click to see what's going on. So it's saying I9, and I9 is right here, and that's the previous, that's where the memory is, all right? So, and then it's minus F10, which is the demand that was filled, so that's reduced. And then if it looks at J9, which is, did we place an order, all right? And if we did, then it's T11, which is over here, which is bringing in 10. So right here, both the um, previous ending inventory plus order, plus placing an order takes into account um, you know, the past. So it has memory and we're not going to just have <laughs> a big uh, batch of stuff coming in every day. It's saying, hey, we've already got some stuff coming in. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to build a data table 
and we want to take these numbers here all right and we want to replicate them 200 times so we did a simulation uh, and the simulation was based on the 25 uh, looks like the observations here all right but we can do that and to approximate for n times we'll do that 200 times so let's build a data table over here so let's go up over here okay so i'll just type in here um, data table okay we'll have the runs how many runs we're doing and then uh for the headers i can just just grab these here and then just do the copy and paste there we go and then um, like before i would just do one two uh, give excel a pattern highlight both and then use the uh, fill handle here and just drag that down 200 times there we go there's 200 right there okay and then we'll go back up now again um, just like a farmer needs to plant seeds we need to plant some seeds for the data table so we need to go uh, equals and then we grab down here for holding costs all right and then we do for stock out costs equals and then grab the bottom stock out cost right here and order cost same thing for here we just do equals and then we'll grab that third one there and then lastly we'll go equals and grab the total cost all right we'll just verify okay so 162 112 120 and 233 62. okay so it's looking good now um the numbers on this file are locked so everything is all locked up in terms of formulas so if you want to go into formulas and go into calculation options and then automatic okay and then everything's going to be allowed to float because without that it would just replicate the same numbers because everything's locked up all right to do data table i just got to highlight everything but the headers right so all the columns including the number of runs everything but the headers Okay, so we got all 200. And then we go into uh, data. What if analysis, and then we go into data table. Okay, so again, we're going down. So we put into the column input cell. And we just choose something blank. You know, for example, this cell right here is uh, blank, right? So this one right here is blank. So we just choose... Uh, AB1. All right, so there's nothing special about that cell. I just need to uh, input in a blank cell for it to replicate. And then press OK. OK, and we can put this into green. All right, we can put that. Let me just grab some green there. And can probably make that a bit brighter something that pops a bit okay the lighter and brighter the better there we go and maybe I can put some some thick borders around the whole thing just to draw attention to it okay so what we want to do now is we got to 200 runs and again what we did is we replicated what was down here 200 times so what we can do is we can say right here based on 200 replications okay so we can do the um i guess the average and the first cost that we were looking at was the holding cost so average uh, holding costs all right and then the other one was average and that was stock out costs remember those were the costs of people leaving with empty-handed because you didn't have enough for them and then average order cost move that over a bit okay so this is the title so let me just um, okay then we got the average total cost Okay, so this is the heading, and let me just put a thick 
border around it. And do it for here as well. And this is all an output, so let's just put that into uh, green. All right, now draw our attention to it. Okay, so average holding costs, so we'll just do uh, equals and an average. Okay, we'll grab the first number. Okay, so the first number right here, x3 all the way down to x200. Okay, we'll just go back up. All right, so X3 to X202. Okay, stockout costs. Okay, so for average stockout costs, we just type in average. All right, and we know it's from Y, because it was from X3, so the next one over is Y, so it'll be from Y3 to Y202. All right, the next one is average order costs, and that's in the Z column, so this would be equal to average, and then it would be Z3 to Z202. Okay, then average total cost is in the double A, so that's average. And that'll be AA3 all the way down to AA202. Okay, and just to verify that 202 is indeed all the way down, you can see that it is. It grabs everything. Okay, great. Okay, so this is all in currency, so we should probably highlight it. I'm just going to hit the right click of the button there and do format cells. And since it's all money, I'll just click on currency, press OK, and then we've rounded it to the nearest penny, the nearest cent. Okay, so that's the data table.